Right behind me is the excellent waterfront saloon, Two Georges. Over the last nearly 20 years, my wife Anita and I have watered ourselves at this boat watching bar more than any other because A, it's great, and B, it's close to our house. We'll take you inside later because our bar tour today is north to south and this one's smack dab in the middle. Those who have watched our bar touring videos uh, know that we're partial to the dive bars at the Keys and to Key West. And we do love to head on down there for a long weekend or a longer weekend when we can. But we live in Palm Beach County and our own habitat certainly doesn't suffer from a shortage of four star watering holes. So please join us this time for a bar hopping tour of some of our favorite locations hereabouts to squander time tossing back a drinker five. Of all the gin joints in all the towns in all the world, we invite you to walk into ours, a righteous sampling of the bars of Palm Beach County. Palm Beach County is 47 oceanfront miles long, north to south, Palm Beach County is 52 miles wide, but almost all humans are packed into the 10 miles between the turnpike and the ocean because a few miles west of the turnpike is mainly alligators, Everglades, and farmers. The county we drink in is larger in area than either Rhode Island or Delaware, so that's a lot of bars. We start up north in Jupiter. There are bars north of Jupiter, but sometimes you have to draw a line, and I drew mine across Jupiter. The south line is Boca Raton. Bar number one is Square Grouper, named for floating bales of marijuana or cocaine that washed up on the Atlantic shoreline. But you probably know this bar because of a music video shot right here by Alan Jackson and a guy by the name of Jimmy Buffett. I can't play this loud because copyright, but you know the words. Pour me something, tall and strong, make it a hurricane, before I go insane. It's only half past 12, but I don't care because, you know, it's, it's five o'clock somewhere. So like many of the best bars, it's a waterfront dive bar. Boaters step into Square Grouper from Castaway Marina. Across the inlet connecting the Atlantic Ocean and the Intracoastal Waterway is Jupiter Lighthouse, which is nice. The menu lands solidly within the waterfront bar island genre. Here's what it looks like when you stand over by the lighthouse and look back across the inlet to Square Grouper. You know, you can climb the lighthouse. And when I say that, I mean you can climb the lighthouse. I'll spend my $10 lighthouse admission seniors discount on another beer. Let's look around before we head to the next bar. Oh, also, there's another great Alan Jackson music video shot entirely at Square Grouper. It's called Long Way to Go, but most know it as I Got a Bug in My Margarita. Alan Jackson drinking cocktails while surrounded by beautiful women backed by mariachis on the Square Grouper stage. Next stop is Guanabanas. You know on Google Maps when you search for directions you can pick a car or a bicycle or a stick figure of a walking person? Well, a stick figure walking person can walk the dotted line between Square Grouper and Guanabanas in five minutes. Two minutes by car. It's right across A1A, just a couple of hundred feet east.
It's also on the water, but this is a circle of water off the intracoastal waterway that makes an island of Burt Reynolds Park. Burt Reynolds was beloved in Jupiter. His memory is a blessing. Anyhow, that's Burt's Park across the water over there. A guanabana is a spiky tropical fruit that tastes like a banana with a citrus kick. That's what they say. I never tried one. I always intend to ask somebody at Guanabanas if they have any Guanabana trees growing there, but then I always forget. This is a place with a bar for sitting, but a lot of paths for walking to little alcoves with pretty views and lush green trees and such. Some little bridges over a running stream. Artists creating art. and plenty of tropical scenery in which to either wander or to plant oneself and one's friends for a congenial hour or three. Down along the waterway, one can rent a stand-up paddleboard. Or you can sit on one of the dozens of artistically painted Adirondack chairs and sip a drink and watch other people paddleboarding. Now we get back in the car for a quick drive on A1A to Route 1 and then south to a complex called Harborside Place. Since it takes less than three minutes to get here from Guanabanas, our air conditioning hasn't even had time to get cold. Which is why we are going to Harborside because the bar we will stop at there has air conditioning. Most bars on our tour are open air and many in view of water. But we're going into the woods. Not the Into the Woods, written by Stephen Sondheim and nominated for 10 Tonys. No, we're going into Tiger Woods' signature sports bar. Speaking of Tonys, Tiger's is a pretty Tony sports bar. Won't find peanut shells on the floor here. Our bartender, Robin, confirms that Tiger Woods has been seen in the woods, sometimes with his son Charlie and daughter Sam, who together are undeniably the woods. They sit at a private table in the back. There is some Tiger iconography on display. On the wall between the men's and women's bathrooms is mounted a handsome handprint of Tiger's right hand. It's a limited edition, number 10 of 25. Can't imagine what some rich golfer would pay to display one of the other 24. We had a small charcuterie board to split among us, as one does. Plenty of TVs abound. It is a sports bar. Quality cigars are sold here to be smoked on the outdoor patio. There's a satisfactory collection of local craft beers on tap and top shelf scotches and other whiskeys. You know, the usual stuff the Jupiter Island one percenters throw back after a morning's 18 holes. When you settle up, your check comes wrapped in a Tiger Woods scorecard. Pretty cool. Use your Tiger Woods pen to fill in your own scores, alleging that you narrowly beat him on the front nine. Back on Federal Highway, US Route 1, we descend from Jupiter to our next waterside destination, North Palm Beach and Frigate's Waterfront Bar and Grill. Frigate is the name given full-rigged French warships in ye olden days of tall ships. But uh, Frigate the Bar is named for the Frigate Bird, which was named for the warship. 
The sign out front shows a frigate bird in flight, which is where they spend most of their lives snatching fish right out of the ocean and sleeping with half their brains while the other half soars on upper air currents. The largest species of frigate bird is called the magnificent frigate bird, but frigates the bar is a modest bar and does not claim magnificence aside from its Sunday brunch and the lunch bowls perhaps. There is an inside bar. But the draw is the outside deck and the waterfront bar. In view from the bar are boats gliding by on what's called the Irman River, which is really the C-17 drainage canal. But Mr. Irman was a local farmer who helped dig out an existing creek to drain his fields. And the Irman River has a more pleasing ring to it. The waterway leads from other canals out to the Intracoastal Waterway and Singer Island and the ocean beyond. <laughs> Gotta confess, we like to come to frigates, especially because of the presence, on many days, of its reigning royal couple, our pals, Mo and Sally, the stars of the forever top morning show on Cool 105.5. Full disclosure, I used to be their news dude, and they were our first friends after we moved to South Florida. Is it 20 years? Inconceivable. Thanks to waitstaff standout Chad pouring the wine, for taking this photo. Frigates has some nice craft beers on tap. We love a great waterfront dive bar, but one hesitates to call frigates a dive. Its food is sufficiently elevated over the usual conch fritters and blackened grouper to be genuine cuisine. No offense to the conch and the grouper, which continue to remain uppermost among the most revered of waterfront bar bites. Time to press on. My name's McBride, so you won't be shocked if I take it to O'Shea's, am I right? It's that sort of place that flies the countdown clock to St. Patrick's Day on its website and the sort of place where you will be mocked by your fellow barflies should you order a Smithwick's instead of Smittix. If you are in West Palm Beach on St. Patrick's Day, you are quite likely inside O'Shea's Irish Pub in the 500 block of Clematis. The packed bar overflows into an equally busy backyard outdoors with a full bar and music and dogs wearing green. But on this day, St. Patrick's Day is five months away, and the backyard is deserted while the football fans kick up a ruckus inside. It is Saturday, and there are two different sorts of football on the TVs. One is played with a round ball, and in the other game, the ball is a prolate spheroid. Packed into the side room bar, University of Michigan fans are cheering the Wolverines versus the despised Penn State Nittany Lions. And in the main bar, Tottenham fans are singing and chanting for Harry Kane in his 400th match as a hot spur versus the despised Everton Toffees. Nobody in the bar was disappointed as Michigan beat Penn State 41-17 and Tottenham beat Everton 2-0. Saturdays, the bar opens at 10 a.m., so you can pair a pint with your breakfast. The Irish part of the menu includes the obligatory fish and chips and shepherd's pie, and bar bites include a bowl of fries with Guinness gravy. O'Shea's is a drinker's bar, so the beer choices number more than 30, and the back bar displays more than 50 whiskeys, including eight kinds of Jameson. Friendly bartenders, Bruma and Gabby, are perpetual motion machines keeping all these hooligans lubricated.
Actually, the football fans are rowdy, but not roughhouse rowdy. So they're not really hooligans, but they are fanatical. So what's a mashup of fanatical and hooligan? Fooligans. Kruma and Gabby keep the fooligans lubricated. Florida made craft beers are not overlooked. You will like La Rubia Blonde Ale from Miami or Isla Mirada Sandbar Sunday, which is always my backup choice when the bar doesn't have my favorite. But this day, it's Smittix. Time to move along with an Irish goodbye, which is accomplished by leaving without saying goodbye. Some mistakenly think Irish goodbyes are rude, when in fact the Irish famously take their leaves without a by your leave because they wish to spare their host the pain of separation. So we just leave and our absence will go unnoticed until our faces appear again at this bar. Leaving O'Shea's, there are a dozen bars along Clematis Street before it splits into a V and joins with Flagler Drive on the Intracoastal Waterway. We are heading to the waterfront, so we're going to skip past local favorites like Kapow and Rocco's Tacos because we're going to visit their outposts in Delray and Boca. Our next bar is E.R. Bradley's Saloon. A trip to the bathroom will take you past a museum of E.R. Bradley's personal history. Colonel Bradley was an honorary Kentucky Colonel, a title bestowed by the hundreds on various celebrities by Kentucky governors. The Colonel list including the late Queen Elizabeth and the Stars of Duck Dynasty for crying out loud. But Colonel Bradley earned his credentials fair and square as a Kentucky Colonel as a breeder and racer of Kentucky Derby winning horses, four of them, and three Preaknesses, and two Belmonts. Edward Riley Bradley made his money running lavish gambling clubs in the playgrounds of the super rich, and his beach club on Palm Beach was called the classiest gambling house in the world. Flo Zigfield of the Zigfield Follies lost a fortune there. Everybody who was anybody on Palm Beach spun the roulette wheel or rolled the dice. It was not remotely legal, but the rules are different for the rich, and the cops got theirs. This bar is not that place. The Bradley Beach Club was on the other side of the water, on Palm Beach, a few blocks a little ways north at the end of the bridge up there. That casino was torn down in 1946, and the land was willed to the town of Palm Beach, where it is now, Bradley Park. This ER Bradley's is a tribute saloon and drinkers and diners include people who live and work nearby and the one percenters who live on the island over there. This ER Bradley's has big indoor and outdoor spaces. There are multiple bars, and the bartenders are swift and personable. Bradley's is directly across the water from the Henry Flagler Mansion, Whitehall, which is a cool place to go. 
The menu is a mix of affordable and pricey, and cocktails are creative and generous. If you're with a bunch of shellfish fans, Bradley's got you covered with a seafood tower with everything but the kitchen sink for $110. If you walk out the door from the north side of ER Bradley's, you can explore the downtown waterfront. A nice green market is here on Saturdays from October to April. They build a giant Christmas tree out of sand out here for the holidays. She is called Sandy. There's a ginormous boat show with ginormous boats on the water here in March. E.R. Bradley's has been a feature on the West Palm waterfront for going on 40 years, but a shiny new and spectacular waterfront saloon and eatery is just a stone's throw away, if you could throw a stone a distance of three football fields. About a four minute stroll to the north from E.R. Bradley's. Elizabetta's is a trattoria right out of a 50's Italian movie set. A handsome, comfy bar with high back padded bar chairs. The bartenders and wait staff and kitchen staff number in the dozens. We've come to know Terrace as our smiling greeter at the bar. The imaging is eye candy and it's everywhere. Elizabeth's is named for a chef and restaurant imagineer who is a partner and corporate culinary director of Big Time Restaurant Group, and she runs more than a dozen restaurants hereabouts. Elizabetta was the name given her by her Italian father, although she answers to Lisbeth or just LB. You can sometimes see her directing the culinary orchestra in the back of the house. But anyway, just look at this place. It could be waterfront on the Italian Riviera. Overhead TVs abound for sports. The yachts over there are a nice touch. And the elevated Italian cuisine is top notch. It's a big, well-oiled operation, and you can spend happy hours here enjoying the ambience and the conversation with a friendly and smart bar staff. I said before we often favor dive bars, and this is the opposite, but we're not snobs about being divey, and a beautiful bar is a beautiful bar. And there is a bonus bar, not to be missed, just steps away from our current bar stools at a much higher altitude. Out the north side of Elizabetta's and just behind it rises the Ben Hotel, a slick and popular addition to the West Palm waterfront. And up on the rooftop is a swimming pool. And beside it is a bar called Spruzo, which is Italian for splash. You don't even have to go inside the hotel to get up there. The elevator is outside next to the valets parking the Bentleys and Mercedes and Spruzo commands the best views of any bar in Palm Beach County.
Just down below is the roof over Elizabetta's. Remember the Bradley Beach Club in Old Palm Beach? E.R. Bradley's Speakeasy and Casino? The one that's now a public park? It was just on the other side of that bridge, just between the bridge and the Palm Beach Biltmore, which was a hotel for the rich in the 1920s, and now is a condo building for the rich in the 2020s. 2,000 square feet there with water out the window will cost you about five to $10 million. And the coolest thing is that their $10 million view is of you over here sipping cocktails with a much better view of the Biltmore and the Flagler Mansion and the Breakers and the clouds sailing away toward the deep blue Atlantic horizon beyond. It's good to be you. From high up to higher up, now we glide above Lake Worth Beach. We're going to the beach end of that pier way down below that sticks out into the Atlantic. It's a place to drink and to eat and to fish at Benny's on the Beach. <laughs> Benny's has been on the pier since Cheers followed the Cosby Show and Family Ties on NBC. Lake Worth rebuilt the casino building above the beach a decade ago and the Anchor Bar and Restaurant has changed names a couple of times, and finally, at long last, Benny's took it over. And so now there are two Benny's, a beachy, casual one on the pier, and a more elegant incarnation in the casino building a minute's walk away. The pier Benny's has a small bar with an ocean view. And the views from the second floor are also always in demand. There are notices posted encouraging visitors to walk a few steps to the big yellow building and the new Benny's Ocean Walk. Outside Ocean Walk are tables with a view of the sea. Our destination is the bar inside. On the day of this visit, Mercy and Al are the friendly and speedy bartenders. Did you want a glass? Yes, please. And the food tastes as good as it looks. Lake Worth Beach has no shortage of bustling big league bars. Let's go visit another one. Now we move from the beach a few blocks away to downtown Lake Worth Beach, which changed its name from Lake Worth a few years ago because it felt out beached by North Palm Beach and Riviera Beach and West Palm Beach and Boynton Beach and Delray Beach and Highland Beach and thought it high time to remind travelers it has a fine beach its own self. So voters tacked on the last name of beach to join the South Florida Municipal Beach Club. Some call it L-Dub for short. In the heart of Lake Worth Beach resides another notable Irish pub worth a few pints of your time. Like the town, its name has changed too, from Brogues to Brogues Down Under, and now to the Irish Brigade. Most days when you arrive for lunch at opening, it's not hard to find a place at the bar in a laid back neighborhood landmark with good pub food and friendly faces on both sides of the bar.
But when Liverpool plays, get there early to claim your stool. Liverpool is the home team here, and today they're playing the hated Tottenham Hotspurs, the same team we watched beat Everton in O'Shea's pub in West Palm Beach. Liverpool fans dress in team colors and jerseys. The place is packed, but bartenders Morgan and Joey keep up, even when the call is for a Guinness, which takes six steps to pour properly, and according to Guinness protocol, requires 119 and a half seconds to accomplish. On this day, the backroom bar at Irish Brigade is reserved for Miami Dolphins fans who are hoping for a win over the Chicago Bears. Anita and I are both from Chicago, but we have lived in South Florida for 20 years, so Bears, Dolphins, it's a win for us either way. And the food is good. In the Liverpool match, the Reds score first. Jello shots are awarded. And when the match is won, fans pose for a group photo. It's a fine day as the fans of both Liverpool and the Miami Dolphins emerge into the Florida sunshine victorious. Pushing the Palm Beach County down button again, we descend to Lantana and a bar and restaurant that lives up to the adjective legendary. The old Key Lime House claims the title Florida's oldest waterfront restaurant and bar because the house that is part of it was built in 1889 when the owners sold oysters and fish and various owners afterwards operated various eateries. There's a bar restaurant in Tampa that claims to be the oldest in the state and a bar north of Jacksonville that swears it's the oldest bar in Florida, but Old Key Lime's original building has been a waterfront saloon and eatery more years than any other, so let's just agree to get along. It has multiple bars, small and large, and some aren't manned some of the time, but there's a big bar inside with sports on flat screens, and a big chicky bar outside with sports on flat screens. The chicky is an ancient form of the structures called tiki's in Polynesia and palapas south of the border. The roof over the bar has been built and rebuilt by palm frond thatching engineering experts of the indigenous Florida Seminole tribe who know how to build a chicky hut structure out of logs and fronds strong enough to withstand most hurricanes. You don't have to remember the word chicky. It won't be on the test. Old Key Lime's website itself calls it South Florida's biggest tiki bar. Good food comes from the kitchens at Old Key Lime. We like the jambalaya because it's great and it's plenty big enough to take half home. And the key lime pie is top notch and a match for the best in the Keys. Old Key Lime's main draws are three, drinking, eating, and the drop-dead view. The intracoastal waterway widens dramatically just down there to the south. The extensive, wide portions of the waterway are collectively known as the Lake Worth Lagoon. During season, it still draws as many locals as Snowbird Looky Loos. Old Key Lime's an assiduous recycler of license plates and keep alert for surprising signs all over the place. The hook and ring toss game is a popular contrivance. 
with the effect of extending the duration of one's drinking time. Speaking of the Seminoles and their roof thatching skills, here they are, fixing hundreds of palm fronds to the hand-hewn log frame just three miles from Old Key Lime House at The Hive Waterfront Restaurant and Tiki. The waterfront it is waterfront on is Lake Osborne, a freshwater lake which is a reservoir draining into the Lake Worth Lagoon through canals which are also traveled by boats. The hive has a bee theme. The hive used to be elsewhere, very near Old Key Lime House. But when it moved to Lake Osborne and went tiki, like the worker bees follow the queen to a new hive, the loyal hive-minded fans of the food and the company moved into their new hive. And the food is very good. There's a buzz about it, you might say. Sandwiches are as big as your head and bowls you could wear as a helmet always enough for the take-home container. Good-sized flat screens are everywhere and some cater to the clientele who like to bet on the horses. On rare days when the weather is a bit blowy or stormy, the bar inside awaits. Just a little more than a mile away from here is a craft brewery called Copper Point which is worthy of being in a future tour, but not today. I bring up Copper Point because the brewmasters there created a signature beer for the hive. It's Anita's favorite, Bee Squeeze, with a touch of honey. Fishing boats dock here for lunch. The bartenders know all the regulars, and the regulars know each other, and will happily include you in their conversations if you are not antisocial. Here's a tip. Here's how the Hive parking lot and the bar look at 11 a.m. This is how the parking lot and the bar look at noon. If your boat was docked at Old Key Lime House, you could go by water south five miles to our next bar, Two George's Waterfront Grill. Actually, a small boat could take you there from the Hive via the Boynton Canal, which comes into the intercoastal just above Two George's. This place has been sitting on the intercoastal for 60 years, way longer than the Boynton Harbor Marina neighborhood which sprang up around it with its high-rise condos and its townhomes and the nifty general store and fueling station serving boaters beside it. Two Georges was founded by George Culver who was actually George Culver Jr., and therefore the other George was his dad. Both Georges are dead, but their shared names are on a big fish, pointing the way to the bar along the marina boardwalk. History has it that the fish was painted to represent a yellowtail snapper in the 1960s and made out of tin from scrap parts of a bomber plane. It eventually was mounted here, where it was repainted to become a red snapper. Two Georges is waterfront on the intercoastal. And also perched over a working marina with fishing charters, dive boats, and other commercial vessels. The sea mist 
is a big drift fishing boat that takes passengers out into the Atlantic twice a day on four-hour trips. There are two bars here, each one home to a giant fiberglass shark. One of them is on the marina, and one is on the intercoastal. And we like the bar stools along the waterfront end of the intercoastal bar. Among the army of great and personable bartenders we have met here, our barman this visit is Dave. And it's always a pleasure for me to greet another brother in the Fellowship of Dave's. This is where locals go to squander quality time with good friends and relations. The menu is Coastal Saloon Comfort Food. Extra fun breaks out periodically throughout the year with events like Rock the Marina. And like the Lionfish Derby, where local divers compete for prizes while eradicating reef-destroying invasive lionfish that also happen to be delicious. Snapper and hogfish, uh, they're, um, they're very tasty. Directly across the marina from the diners here on the Two Georges deck is Banana Boat, another uber popular waterfront bar. Here is the local fishing charter Hammer Time approaching it. Here's the sea mist passing it, returning from all that mist at sea. And here is the view from the opposite side of the inlet from the viewpoint of the banana boaters. Sitting at the bar at Banana Boat affords one thing, a view of the port side of the sea mist as it returns from the sea. Whereas Two Georges views the starboard. The faces of staffers here change infrequently, some having worked here for more than three decades. The outside bar, there's an indoor one too, is shaped like a boat. The curved bow of the boat sporting navigation lights. The boating tribe joins the land-loving clientele here and will see boats of all sizes tied up alongside while their operators get pleasantly oiled at the bar.
on a sunny day on the canvas ceiling, you can watch the projection of silhouettes of seagull feet. The waterfront bars all have a common canon of food and drink meant to evoke a Key Westy and Jimmy Buffett vibe. Banana Boat is one of the reasons that plenty of people have chosen to live here. Short walk home. Banana Boat is a refuge for Boynton Beach barflies on Thanksgiving and Christmas when two Georges and Hurricane Alley nearby are closed. Turkey just like grandma's. Order two. Take one home for leftovers. From here, we will take a four minute walk two blocks away to another of Boynton Beach's best bars, Hurricane Alley. But that's going to have to wait to lead off the next bar tour, coming soon to this here channel. You know, we really could have doubled the number of bars in this tour, but you have other things to do, and we likely have already placed a strain in your attention span. I can think of a ton of great spots we uh, omitted, ocean view and otherwise, including a couple we scratched just because they're over the Palm Beach County line in Deerfield Beach. The good news is, we live here and we will begin assembling another collection of bars for a part two of the bars of Palm Beach County. As the character Ronnie Devereaux said in the 1929 Agatha Christie murder novel, The Seven Dials Mystery, it's a rotten job, but somebody's gotta do it.